agree or disagree with Ed Yardeni? Uh, there's some in there that I do, uh, agree with. And, you know, the fact that the Fed has been waiting for yields to rise of their own accord is probably right. And that that will continue is probably right as well. I mean, uh, folks much smarter than I have made the case that through supply and demand dynamics, that yields will, in fact, continue to rise as there's a glut of treasuries probably about to come to the market. We don't know who the incremental buyer will be. But to say that it has stopped, to say that it is done, I think is probably premature. When we dig into these latest uh, reports, uh, you know, we, Frank, we don't see a lot of disinflation. It's usually contained to several categories that are up a couple of percentage okay. points, but we haven't seen a continuation of that. All right. So, Ross, I'm going to come over to you. What do you think about the CPI report? Agree with Ed Yardeni? Um, I agree with them to an extent. I, I I do think the Fed has done quite a bit of heavy lifting on their own, you know, taking rates from zero to above five percent. I do think they'll be concerned about housing, and if you even look at services, X Shelter, Supercore, um, there was still some stickiness there. So I I think the Fed has said they want to hike again, even if market forces have have made them pull back a little bit on that. I agree that it would be premature to rule out a hike in November or December if we continue to see price pressures, if we continue to see. Uh, wage growth above what they think is consistent with 2%. All right. I know you're also looking at shelter inflation specifically. Uh, that was something else that Ed Yardeni was mentioning. According to him, if you take out shelter inflation, then we're already at the Fed's target. But of course, everybody needs a place to live. Yeah, you can you, you can manipulate the numbers however you want. I do think, you know, removing shelter and seeing that inflation is right around 2% is useful. Um, but I think the Fed at this point sees housing prices ticking up. Even if they're, you know, the, the market based right. indicators are low. So does this impact 2024 then? Is that what you're saying? I think it does. I think housing prices being sticky uh, keeps the feds higher for longer mantra front and center. You know, if they pull back on rates even a little bit, I think it brings housing demand back to the table and only pushes prices up further from here. All right. So, Greg, I'm going to come back over to you. Bank of America out with some research just a short time ago basically saying if the yields stay below 5%, that they don't see the market, the S&P, going below 4,200. Um, if we can stay below 5%, does that you know, increase your willingness to invest in equities? I know you're one of the most bearish people on the street. It, it, it plays a part, but that's not the only variable. And so, yes, uh, rising yields of, uh, are a headwind to the equity markets. But you know what else is a headwind, Frank, is if earnings are wrong. If we're projecting 8% for the fourth quarter, Consensus is projecting 12% for 2024. If there is higher for longer, I don't see how we get to those numbers. Okay. Uh, the things that are bad for earnings are, are multiplying, and we'll see a little bit of that when the banks start to report today. So if the environment's bad for equities, what about bonds? Are you finally willing to go you know, double feet in on bonds and just go ahead from not only the short end of the curve to the long end of the curve? Not double feet. Uh, I will dip a toe in the water, and it probably brings us to the word of the day, which is conundrum. So the conundrum is, is it's not time to buy equities because of all the headwinds that we face next quarter and, and, and next year. And it's likely not time to buy bonds if you believe that yields will increase. That obviously means that today's issues will come at a discount and that future issues will compensate us more. So what to do? Stay at the short end. The short end keeps us liquid. The short end, the yields are right now above those on the long end. And I just don't want to commit okay. to a level of compensation that I think will be higher six months from now. So, Ross, over to you. Apologies, Ross. We didn't ask you for a word of the day, but Greg just gave his. Um, sticking with bonds and these higher yields, I know there's one part of the market that you're saying you're just not going to put money into. It's utilities. However, they are actually the best performer when it comes to S&P sectors this week. But why are you out on utilities in this environment? Well, look, I think if you're in the soft landing camp, you want to buy cyclicals, you want to buy growth, you want to buy things that will reflect the economic environment. You know, on the other hand, if you want to be more defensive, you've got yield from high quality fixed income, whether it's, at, you know, short term treasuries or even adding duration in long term treasuries after this run up in rates. So I just think there's there's this kind of swirl of headwinds for defensives like utilities. Either way, they don't bring growth to the table. And their yield is kind of kneecapped by what you're seeing in fixed income. So uh, we would barbell with, with some more cyclical exposure and then some high-quality fixed income.